Welcome to Lisa's Painting Parties. Today is our monthly free live paint party. Um, we have um, a really fun painting to do tonight. So we're going to be doing this beautiful hidden waterfall painting. So I'm really excited to do this with everyone. Um, so I will be walking through the process of how to recreate this painting. Um, and you'll be able to check it out. If you can't follow along right in this moment, that's totally fine. Uh, the recording will be up on the um, on my Facebook page under the videos tab and also on my YouTube channel as well. So you'll be able to uh, watch it whenever it's convenient for you. Um, if you do join in, please take a picture of your painting and share it. Um, so I'd love to see how everyone's done their own like uh, video, which is fantastic. Hi, everyone who's joining. You can let me know if you're joining. You can like let me know where you're tuning in from. I'll keep an eye on the comments as we go through and if you have any questions as I'm going through uh, the painting session, um, I will respond to it as I see it. Um, if you see something coming up and if you want to answer it or help someone else out, please feel free to do so as well because sometimes I will get into a flow. So if you have the answer, that's totally fine. Um, first off, um, I'll go through the supplies that we'll need for the painting party. I'm not going to actually start painting for another like 10 minutes or so, just in case there's anyone who's jumping on, um, you can um, get some time to grab the supplies if you just have randomly decided to jump in. Um, so first off, you need a canvas. I'm using a, a 12 by 16, uh, but you can feel free to use any size canvas you so desire. Um, I'm using acrylic paint for today's paint session every paint session that's all that's the paint I usually use um, and all you really need if you have white black red blue and yellow you're good to go and you'll be able to paint along and I'll go through like how to go about um, mixing any colors you need if you have other colors you want to use you're more than welcome to paint with that and uh, play around with those as well um, it's really up to you um, and um, you need some water so acrylic is water-based so you need to make sure you have water available for you. However, even though it's water-based, if you do get it on your clothes, uh, you will be stuck with it. So if you get it, make sure you're wearing something or you have something to cover yourself up if you don't want to get paint on you, um, because that will uh, be a little uh, reminder of tonight's event <laughs> if you decide not you don't want it. Um, in terms of paint brushes, I recommend a variety of paint brushes um, sizes. Um, I would suggest, in simplistic terms, a large brush to be able to do lots of main coverage, um, a medium brush, this one has a weird slant to it, but that's fine, and then a fine point brush, which I have over here. So a fine for detail, a medium, and a large. And I say that um, in those terms, because it really depends on the size of canvas you're using. So for my 12 by 16 canvas, I'm using, um, this brush is a size 10, this one's like a two and this one's like a one or a zero. So that's the sizes, but again, you can feel free. It's not like a hard and set rule of which ones you need to use. I also have my palette where I can put my paint on and I have some paper towel. I use paper towel quite a bit during my painting process, more so than I rely on the water. Um, I try not to water down my acrylic paint too much because I find that I don't want it to get too transparent. That can be a technique to use if you so desire, but for what we're painting for today, and for most of the times when I paint, I don't really like to do that, um, but it's really up to you how you want to do it, okay? Um, all right, so I feel like everything changes around on me almost every time I do this. It's kind of funny. Hi, Shelly. Yeah, no problem. If you, yeah, like I said, if you aren't able to stay, that's totally fine. Um, you'll be able to watch this live video um, in like, whenever you want, because I'll have the recording up on my YouTube channel and also on my Facebook page under the videos tab. So you have those options there too. I'm actually doing this also on Instagram Live right now as well and on my Facebook Live. So hopefully there's more platforms you can catch me on there. Um, I'm in Ajax, Ontario, um, and we have lots of smog, not smog, no, smoke in the air from the fires that are burning across um, our provinces. Um, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you are also affected by that too. Let me know uh, where you're tuning in from and uh, how smoky it is for you. Um, the nostalgia of smelling like a campfire is kind of nice, um, although not nice to know why that's happening. Um, but uh, yeah, not, not so great. Kind of gross. 
Hi, Lynn. I'm glad you're joining. Been perfect from Quebec. Amazing. So nice to see names I've recognized and have joined in from before. So great. Um, <clears throat> okay, perfect. So I'm going to start in about four minutes or so, just in case um, anyone else wants to join. The official time um, I was starting is 6.30, so I always start a little bit earlier just in case and just to get everyone like set up and ready to go. Perfect. All right. So again, I'll show the painting. So when we paint with acrylic, we're going to start with whatever's furthest in the back. So I'm going to paint. Um, I actually don't know if I'm going to start with the black right off the hop. I might start. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to start with the black. We're going to do the black sides to start and then we'll get the waterfall in. From there, then we'll probably do the water in the front and we'll build from that point on. So that's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with the black on the sides. And I'm not gonna paint the whole canvas black. I'm just gonna paint my little like strips here and there. I might put a little bit of black behind this area. I don't think I'm, I don't wanna go too dark to there, but we'll see how that goes um, as we do it, okay? And you can feel free to add anything or change anything up. If you wanna change the color of the blossoms, if you wanna change the way other things look, feel free to do so. Um, you're more than welcome to. Every time I do one of these paint parties, um, I look at it more like a, almost like a book club. So this is like the book that we're all reading and you can interpret it any which way that you so desire. So if you want to change up the colors, change up the aspects, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay, so there we go. So that's my little spiel right there. Um, and again, I'll, what I'll do is just before we start, I'll go through my supplies just one more time. So about two minutes we have to go before I'll start. So I have um, my canvas, I have a six, 12 by 16 canvas. Again, you don't have to have the same size. It can be a different size, it's totally fine. I'll just hold it, I'll put it a little bit closer there. Um, I have acrylic paint, so if you have blue, red, yellow, white, and black, you're good to go. At least three different sizes of paint brushes, a large one to do main coverage, a medium one to do a bit more detailed stuff, but not like super detailed, and then a fine tip one to do more detailed work. As long as you have like a three variety, you're good to go. If you have a pack with more, that's totally fine too. I also have water container, paper towel, and a palette. So that's what I'm working with and also my own personal water. And make sure you keep your drink away from your paint water. Very important fact, <laughs> important to keep that separate. All right, okay, great, perfect. So yeah, so if, any, if you're joining in, please feel free to let me know where you're tuning in from, if you're painting along. Um, and that'd be fantastic and we'll get started very soon. This one's a very straightforward, a very easy painting to do I would say. Um, it doesn't, <clears throat> it's not too difficult and it's, it's, it's quite fun because it's quite like it's simple but like makes you feel pretty accomplished when you get it done so it's fun. All right so I have a sip of water and then we're gonna get cracking. All right. Okay, perfect. Hi, Vanessa. Glad you're joining. Awesome. All right. Okay, so we're going to get started in just a minute or two. Just want to make sure everyone has what they need. All right. So, so like I said, the first thing we're going to start with is black to do the black background. And then we're gonna work on the waterfall once that dries off a little bit for us. So you wanna get some black on your palette. I'm gonna keep that over here and I will move my camera so you can see my canvas. Oh, I got a little blurry on Facebook there. Not so great. Okay, we'll do the same thing with this guy here. You get to see most of my light more than my canvas. There we go. That's what we got. That's what we got right now. So we'll, we'll deal with that. Okay. Black. Black paint. Okay. Let's get some black going. And I'm going to use my big brush, my big wide brush to start this process. Okay. So I want black to exist on the sides where my waterfall is. I'm also going to do the top and the sides of my canvas as I do this. I'm not worried too much about how I'm putting the paint on in terms like 
it's just pure black so I just want it to be a nice thin coat but one where I cannot see the white at all of the canvas so it's thin but it has nice opaque coverage if you already are using a canvas that's black that's great you can just enjoy your tea or coffee or drink while we are painting and you can join in just a little bit okay so i'm going to do this like almost like curtain on either side and when i'm painting this i'm using like the my brush flatly so i'm really using the brush to help spread the paint on like that. I'm not dabbing it. So my brush stays very flat. I'm like thin almost, but the thinness doesn't really matter too much. It's just so you know how I'm using it. And whenever I grab paint, I go, I grab it like that. Like I grab it the same way, almost the way I'm painting. So like I'm just drawing the paint out from the palette. So I have the palette and I kind of go like that instead of like smushing it into the paint, I just pull it with the brush. Okay, and again, we want to get the tops. And you want to go in further than where you think the waterfall is going to stop. So you want to make sure that the waterfall is going to sit on top of the black on either side so I think my camp my waterfall is going to be wider than this if you're uncertain make it thinner honestly you can paint the whole thing black if you want to <clears throat> like I said I'm not going to do that but if you want to you can a lot of this painting is black so I'm going to just go down as far as I know I want my water to be it's essentially that I think okay great <clears throat> Hi Marion. Yeah, so today we are painting this painting right here. It's one of the waterfall. That's what we're going to be creating today. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so now that I'm done using this, I'm going to just take off the excess paint with my paper towel. You can just dunk it into the water if you want and wash it off. I, I want to take off some of the paint first and then I'm going to put it in the water. And then clean it off. Okay. And then from here, we're going to start to do the waterfall. Now the waterfall is blue and there is some white. So we can see. So I'm just going to use my blue paint and I'm going to get my white paint ready to go. Okay. And to start, <clears throat> I just want to put just, I want to cover this section in that blue to start. So I think I'm going to make it with the blue paint I have, I'm going to make it just a little bit lighter with the white paint and start to put in this right in the center here. So I'm just going with my blue paint. I made to make it a little bit lighter on my palette, but honestly, like it doesn't truly matter. I'm kind of just going back and forth with the blue and white on my brush. Okay. And I'm going on top of the areas I just created on the side there. And it's okay if some of the darkness gets pulled in. That's, that's fine. It's not a big deal. This is just the base layer of your waterfall. And we're going to be adding in lots of details to this. So it's all good. 
However, if too much black gets on your brush, you do want to wipe it off. That's important. There we go. Oh, right. A bit of a black mark there. Okay, sounds good. So that's where we're going to leave it for now. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. How are you? Hope we're doing good. Hi, Debbie. Thunder Bay, awesome. Okay, so that's going to be the first background layer, essentially. I'm going to let that dry right now. And where I'm going to go, I'm going to jump now just to the bottom to place where I want my water. And we're going to continue with the blue to place where I want that water to go. But now I'm going to start bringing my brush horizontally. And again, there's still going to be like a big mist of water happening. There'll be some rocks and stuff. But again, I just want to put a base layer of paint here. So I started by just putting my blue paint. My black is still wet and that is okay. So I'm going to just create again a base layer for my water that lives down here. And I am going to go across and cover the entire canvas, even though I know there might be some rocks, there might be some other things where I'm not going to have this water fully exposed. But I don't want to have to worry too much about how or where I put my other elements. Because of that, I'm just going to get it fully covered. So that, yeah, that will give me more room to play once I start deciding where I want those rocks to live. And I might make it similar to our inspiration image, or I might change it up entirely. And you have the ability to do that too, right? So you don't have to keep it the same. You can change things up. You can add different things. Maybe you want to add like a frog. Maybe you want to put like a big old tree. You can do whatever your heart desires. Do the bottom too. Okay. And I'm putting blue and then I'm getting white every once in a while just to lighten it up a bit. But again, it's okay because we're going to put things on top of this. This is just our base. And again, I'm going back and forth with my brush. I'm going back this way and forth that way. Just back, forth, back, forth. So I'm just doing broad, quick sweeps, but I'm really using the brush to my advantage to get this covered. Now, I feel like my water line's a little crooked, but we're not going to worry about that because we're going to put rocks and stuff. So it's fine. Okay. So now I want to let this dry a little bit. Um, I think I'm done using my big brush for now, so I'm just going to stick that in water. When you're done using your brush, or you're not going to be using it for a while, you want to put it in water. You don't want the, your brush to um, uh, dry with the acrylic paint. That will make your life a little bit harder. But I'm <laughs> brush too. Okay, I'm gonna move to my like medium size brush. And even though this isn't fully dry, it's still dry enough for us to start putting our lines in and our waterfall in. So see how we have more defined lines that are coming down on the waterfall? We have white, we have like lighter blue, a darker blue, we have a little bit of black, 
I'm not going to worry too much about the black. We'll play with that as it, as it comes. So we're going to start putting in those lines and have that texture happening on the waterfall. And then we're going to do the same thing for the water. That's going to be our next step. Okay. So I think I might start with white and I'm going to go back and forth a little bit. I might go with white, then blue, then light blue, then I'll go back to white. You kind of feel it out. What makes sense to you? And essentially I just want to bring it down. I want to just try to have these strokes and I'm going back and grabbing paint each time you see my brush go away. And I might want to bring from the top of the canvas down. Okay, I'm going to go and get some blue now and do the same thing. I'm grabbing the paint, starting at the top and bringing it down. And for some, I might just start them a little bit lower. I'm going to go back to my white. Okay, so it's starting to have that kind of effect like all the water's coming down. Hi Andy! So nice to see names I recognize. It's so nice to see all of you. Hope you're all doing well. Okay, I think I might make it slightly wider. I think too. I think I want it to come out a little bit further. take a look at it like this just to see what I'm doing. Okay, yep. I think I want to put a little bit more here. I just kind of keep going back and forth between my white and my blue and just trying to not blend it so I'm not going over multiple times I grab the paint I do a swoosh I grab the paint I do another swoosh so I'm kind of just staying where the lines are but then sometimes when I grab a new line of paint I might go over the line that I've just done and then that helps like blend it a bit and make it look a little bit more cohesive but you don't want to be going on top of it over and over. Otherwise you'll end up just making it um, totally blend and you won't have the streaks in there. And for me, I like having those little streaks. If you want to dull them out, that's when you can kind of just go over with your brush a bit to make them a little bit duller instead of it being so like 
noticeable Some of them I do want to do that. I'm going over it a little bit on some spots. Okay. So I think I'll move away from that perimeter a little bit and I'm going to start to put some of the lines on the water and I'm going to use the same techniques essentially only we're going to go horizontal instead. So I'm going to just start putting in like little lines and I grabbed the blue to start. And again, when I take the paint from the palette, I'm pulling it onto my brush. So my brush becomes quite thin and flat. So then I can use it on that thin edge to get all these little thin strokes and I prefer I, you can do this with your um, detailed brush but I find that with a, a thicker like a bigger brush you can hold more paint in the barrel of the brush and so that allows you to get a few more strokes out of it than if you were to use like a really thin brush so you need to go back and reapply the paint more frequently so I like that for that purpose Okay, so I did a bunch of it in that blue. I'm gonna get some white on my brush, but I'm kind of almost making like a lighter blue in this process. So let's do that first. So when I'm doing these strokes, what's going through my mind is I want them to be, again, all horizontal, but I want them ideally to be not super uniform i want them to be a little varied so some are a bit longer than others and again you'll notice i'm doing it over the entire base of it which isn't fully necessary but i like this because then when i place my rocks or anything else i can kind of put them wherever i want and it doesn't make me more constricted to have them only in certain spots and I can always go back and add more detail after at that point. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see the button. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my bright blue again. And you can feel free to add different colors if you want, if you want to get away from making this so blue. You can change this up, you can put purple, you can do whatever you want in here. Just like a green lagoon, <laughs> whatever you want. Okay, so we have our waterfall, we have our water. We still are gonna put the splash back. Right now, this is just the bases, so we don't have any real movement, but you already can tell it's like water into a pool, which is cool. Um, I think I'm going to do maybe a little bit more white before I So, okay, so from here, we want to put our splash back area and get that going. So let's take a look at our inspiration image, take a look to see how that's going to look. So it has a lot of movement, it's white, and we have kind of little swooshes in like a, a curl, kind of go like, almost like little, like little half moon shapes. That's what we want to evoke in that area. So that's what we're going to start doing now. So again, also with our medium brush and with white, I think I need a little bit more white on my palette. So I'm going to add that. Okay. What? My brush. Very long handles on my brushes, so. 
I tip over. Okay. Again, I'm going to get here, and then I'm just going to start small. And I'm using, like, the brush itself has texture to it, so I'm going to use that to help me with the movement that this is going to evoke here. The splashiness. I'm going back frequently to get more paint on my brush. A lot of the paint below it is wet, so it is not staying very white. So I'm just going to get a little bit more to a little bit. have kind of like a splash back feel to it. I think I'm going to leave that momentarily because I want to go back and add some more to it, but I'll do it with a detailed brush afterwards. So right now we're good as is. And so now what I want to do is I want to start adding in some of the rocks that are living on the side. So with my medium brush, I'm going to go and get some black and I want a big old rock to live here. Okay. Get a bunch of shape. I'm just gonna paint this area black. And then I think I'm going to do like another one. Do another one right here. Okay, and maybe we'll do some of this one. Maybe we'll have it be kind of flat. And then that one will be like here, sitting in the water. Maybe another one here. Maybe we'll have another one right here. this one a little bigger or we'll put another one actually yeah maybe I'll just be a separate one it's like a bunch of rocks so I'm just gonna put their shapes right now in the water and then we'll add some definition to them afterwards okay and we're gonna do the other side too so we're gonna have one that's kind of coming out Nice and big. Okay. And then we 
gonna do another one like here. It's gonna be pretty big here. Awesome. Maybe there's another one right here. Okay. Maybe we have a smaller one. So really you can do as many or as few as you desire. Okay. I think we're good with our rocks all over the place. Rocky rocks. All right. Okay. Um, and then we have a bit of like ground that lives at the bottom here. Almost like a rocky like shore, if you will. That'll just give us our base when we want to put some of our grasses and stuff that's going to grow up from the bottom. Make that a little higher on this side. Okay, great. So, there we go. We have our rocks. We're going to let those dry before we do any other detailing to them. Um, we have our splashy waterfall, which is great. And then now we can start putting in, I think, because all this is now dry. So, I think we'll move up to do our trees, our branches, flowering branches up here. And then we'll go back and do our rocks and then the grass after. Cool, so to do the tree. So I think in our example, I just use black for the branches, but I think I do want them to stand out a little bit more. So I think I am going to use Maria Brown instead um, to put them in place. So. If you just have your primary colors, you want to mix equal parts of blue, red, and yellow, and then you'll get a browny gray color, which will work nicely. Otherwise, if you have a pre-mixed brown, you could use that as well. Um, so I'm going to just use that since I have that available. So I think I'm going to use, um, you know what, I might use my medium brush actually. To do the brown branches. How's everyone doing? Hopefully everyone's doing all right. This is a pretty, I think a pretty quick one, to be honest. There's more, of course you can do more detailing and whatnot, but has it been just about, what, like 20 minutes, I guess? Nope, it's about 40 minutes, 30 feet. Mm, yeah. Half an hour. Right, so we already have like a good, good flow going. Okay. So to add my branches, I'm just going to decide, I can put them anywhere I want, really. So I say that one goes like that. I want it to be a bit thicker. Maybe it will go off the side here. Why not? Okay, we're going to have another one. do whatever you desire with that stuff sticking out. Great. 
Or you can do that. as many or as few as you want. I'm going to do some on this side and I'll do some here a bit higher. And I want some of these to go into the waterfall, so. Okay. playing with them just trying to keep the ones that are further away thinner than the ones that are closer to the main stalk okay so I have some up and there cute all right, maybe we'll even have one more. No, I don't know if we're gonna have one coming up from the top. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. I want them to come a bit more further where the waterfall is coming. That looks good. Okay, cool. So you have some at the top, some at the bottom. Perfect. Cool. So I'm going to put that in there for a moment. And now I'm going to just take a look and say, okay, what do we have down here that's dry? So most of my rocks are actually pretty dry. There's just a few little spots that are still wet, so that's great. So we can start putting in some of the details on that while we let our branches dry. So let's take a look at our inspiration image again. So for the rocks, what we want to do is we want to have one side is going to be a bit lighter. And you can do that with just putting like literally like a flat surface on it. I either have the lines going one way or down another way. These ones kind of go a little bit more like sideways, essentially, and a bit more blendy. Um, but essentially, all you want to do is just highlight one side of the rock with a bit of white. And we might get a little bit of gray, too, just to like light, um, just darken it up a little bit. So it's not just like a stark white. So I'll show how that is. But we definitely don't want it to be really wet and black because then it will just take over the whole process. And we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to get my medium brush again. The medium brush is like my best friend. For this painting so I'm gonna start I'm gonna start with white paint right and let's say I want it to be on here so the nice thing is that the the canvas gives you kind of a cool texture already and I think I want another layer here. So I'm going to utilize the texture that the canvas is already giving me to start to put in that was a wet spot. Okay, and then I want like here so here is the top of that rock.
in the past. All right, so we already have, so just by putting the little bit of white on it, it already kind of looks like rocks, which is kind of crazy. And then we have to just like continue to like put a little bit of gray into it and a little more black just to like not make it so pronounced, but then you're good to go. Hi, Jara. You can watch this from the beginning. Um, I think, I don't know if you can rewind it right now when it's alive, but it will be available on my, um, under the videos tab and also on my YouTube channel after this is done. So you can follow along from the beginning at that point. It will be available and I'm not taking it down so you can watch it whenever it's convenient for you. I'm going to put a little bit of this along the beach too. So I'm just, again, utilizing the canvas that's already kind of textured plus my brush, which already has a bit of texture too. In this. I'm going to make a bit of a gray with my black and my white. Black is super powerful. <laughs> just keep that in mind. I'm just going to add a little bit of gray. Just like under some of the areas that I had just made. And I'm going to go full black and then just mess up some of the just the pure black. I think I want that to be a little bit lighter here too. My pleasure. Awesome. So I'm kind of digging it. It's kind of cute. Let me just get a little bit more white. Okay. I think we're good. It's kind of strange because I, it's almost like I want to start blending it, but the more you blend it, the less it looks like a rock. So it's better just to keep it kind of splotchy almost. Um, now what I want to do as well is I want to add some shadows to the water of where my rocks are sitting. So I'm going to get again my thin brush, my thin brush, my medium brush. Get some black paint and make sure it's very, very thinly applied. And then I'm just going to go and put in a few little black lines under where the shadow would be, where my rocks are living. Oh, my family just made popcorn. I can smell it. <laughs> it smells so good. I'm 
going on top of the rock. I'm going to have to fix that after. I'm going to get a little blue. Oh, no, I want to get a little bit of black in that blue. Oh, that's so dark. Too. Just playing a bit with the water. So I just put a few little darker areas and then I'm going back with the um, brighter blue and just adding it back on top. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and get some white. And then I'm just going to add a bit more of these lines, kind of down there you go, kind of more in the center of where that water is splashing. Oh, Joe. <laughs> Honestly, when I'm looking at it close up, I don't think they look like rocks either. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. Try not, don't think of them as rocks. Think of it as dark and light colors. So you want your black silhouette and then all you want to do is get white and you want to just put white on the edge of it. And that's kind of it. And then you want to move on to the next rock. And once you do that, it gives that appearance of it. It's not perfect rocks, but it has that appearance of it. And then what I did was I just added a little bit of the gray. It does take some practice, um, but I find the less I play with the rocks, the better they turn out. So you have to kind of just put the black and then just go with the white and then like leave it. And then don't touch it anymore. Or if you're tempted to touch it, wait until like, don't do it right away. Maybe like give it a, a, a good, like, you know, move on, do other rocks, do other things and then look at it, but don't, don't go into it full on right off the hop because they don't look right. They never do. I'm going to add a little bit of like, almost like a little splashy back. So it's the thin part of my brush here. little bits not much just a few little little bits okay um now i'm going to go back up and i'm going to put in all of the little flowers that are happening on my trees so i used kind of like a, a purpley pink for um our inspiration one so that's our inspiration painting it's a purpley kind of pink you can decide what flowers you want you can decide if you want them to be there if you just want them to be trees or whatever your heart desires um i think for this one, I think I kind of want to do like yellow. Yellow is calling to me this time. So I'm going to start with yellow. Okay. Um, and I am going to go with my uh, thin detailed brush. Very good point, Cynthia. Yeah, definitely look at things from further away. Every time so many times in your painting you're so 
in it that is good just to like hold it back from you and just see it from a different perspective and, and it does actually help quite a bit because you get so into it okay I'm gonna get a bit of my brush and the way I'm gonna do these is it just kind of I'm just doing like almost like three little just some and then some may just be like two Some has more. Okay, and I'm just doing them on the ends. You can add more to them. I'm just going to start off just doing it on the ends. Each branch gets a little... A little bud. little buds everywhere and they can go really anywhere like on the inspiration image I have them all over the place um, so you can do it that way if you want to or you can uh, this one I'm just doing it I think just on the ends for now and then I'm gonna get some green I'm just mixing my blue and my yellow together I'm just gonna add a little bit of green foliage little like I'm just doing them kind of willy-nilly And I'm really just using my brush to create almost like little stamps of the leaf. I'm just like pushing it down and it kind of creates almost like a little 
and this is a ghost. So it's a little bit different. So I have yellow buds and then I have green leaves. I'm going to add a bit more. I'm going to make these a bit bigger, I think. You can see a bit bigger. Kind of random. So fun. Pretty. Okay. So, where are we going to go next? I uh, suppose we are going to put some grass. So in our inspiration image, I have some like grasses that are like popping up at the bottom there. And how we're going to do that is, I think I'm going to use my medium brush to do that. You can use the medium one or the more detailed one. It's really up to you. I'm going to start with black and I'm going to start just putting Again, I put the paint on my brush to get a really thin line, and then I'm just gonna bring up the brush. And I want them to be bigger on the sides. I want them to kinda crossy a little bit. I don't want them to all just be going straight up. I want them to kind of go on top of other ones. And then I'm going to get the green that I made. Do I need to make some more? The blue and my yellow. So I want to do the same thing with the green. Up. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And I think with this one, I don't know if I'm going to add more flowers or anything. I think I'm done. I think I feel good about that. I think that works good. Oh, I think the camera is not doing very well. Let's see. Maybe that's a bit better. There you go, Debbie. Sorry about that. I apologize. 
So I was doing upward strokes with my medium sized brush with black paint and I was just going upwards and I was making the brush very, very thin. You could also use your thin, like fine brush as well to do that. And then I did the same thing in green on top of it. And the green, I mixed the green, which is why some of it has a bit of yellow, kind of very noticeable that you can kind of see it. Um, that's why it's like that. You can always add more to it as well. Okay, I think I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, yeah, I think I feel pretty much complete. So, there we go. So that is the painting for today's live. Um, I hope you enjoyed our painting session. So again, let me see. Oh, it's cutting off my head too. There we go. Oh, left. I need a a video person <laughs> to handle all this for me. All right, here we go. So there we go. So here is our, I'm getting my finger all dirty now. <laughs> all right, so there's our completed painting from today's session. So really fun, easy to do. It's been just over an hour. It's a really quick, fun painting to do. So I hope you all enjoyed that. If you did follow along, please um, take a picture of what you created and uh, share it with uh, me and the painting parties. Yeah, on my Facebook page, you can add it as a post there. Um, and if you weren't able to paint along, you can definitely do so um, anytime you'd like. Uh, there are over a hundred other uh, painting tutorial videos available on my YouTube channel and also under the videos tab of my Facebook page. So feel free to check that out. If you're interested in doing your own painting party, please reach out to me and we can talk about that as well. Have a fantastic rest of your night and I will see you next month live to do July's painting session. Uh, take care everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.